Hello. This lecture addresses a common cause of pregnancy loss in the second trimester, the incompetent cervix. There is little to no information about this in your textbook, so I thought I'd put a lecture together so you could learn about it because you will see it. An incompetent cervix is one that is not strong enough to remain closed throughout the pregnancy, leading to either spontaneous loss of the pregnancy or preterm labor. This patient does not have contractions, yet the cervix dilates. The actual pathophysiology of an incompetent cervix is unknown other than it has less elasticity than a normal cervix. There are a few risk factors for developing an incompetent cervix, including cervical trauma, as in overaggressive cold knife conization or laser procedure for cervical dysplasia. Repeated forceful dilation of the cervix due to elective terminations or DNCs for abnormal uterine bleeding, or lacerations of the cervix from a previous delivery. However, many women with an incompetent cervix have none of these risk factors. What are the signs and symptoms? Well, this is cervical dilation without contractions. There's no pain, no pressure. If we are lucky, we discover this condition early in the second trimester through routine ultrasound. What we see on ultrasound is a thin cervix. Normally, it should be four to five centimeters long, and now it is only two or three centimeters. We may see what we call funneling or beaking of the membranes. Look at the picture on the left. It demonstrates a nice long cervix with a closed os in the upper picture, while the lower picture shows the cervix is dilated and thinned. When you look at the ultrasound picture, between those two plus signs is the cervical length. To me, it looks like a maximum of two centimeters. In addition to the left of those plus signs, you see the funneling of the amniotic fluid within the membranes. This is also known as beaking because it looks like a bird's beak. Then to the left of the funneling is the fetal head. To maintain the pregnancy, the obstetrician performs a surgical closure of the cervix known as a cerclage. He or she uses a suturing technique around and or through the cervix. Research has shown that a prophylactic cerclage prevents shortening of the cervix in close to 90% of at-risk women. The cerclage remains in place until 36 or 37 weeks of gestation or until spontaneous labor occurs. This procedure is performed only if the fetus is deemed normal, as in no major congenital anomalies, and there is no infection present. The most common techniques are the McDonald or Sherrod cart. The difference between them is where they are placed. The McDonald suture technique is the most prevalent procedure at this time. After the procedure, the patient is sent home and follows reduced activity as well as pelvic rest. At this point, we do not put the patient on disability. Remember, this is occurring very early in the pregnancy, about 14 or 15 weeks of gestation. Despite our best efforts, even after the procedure, we can still lose the pregnancy, as can be seen on this slide. The suture is in place, yet the fetus and the membranes protrude through the cervix. At this point, there is nothing more we can do, and the patient ends up with a second trimester pregnancy loss. Be pre prepared to provide emotional support as she goes through labor and, and delivers this fetus. She will not be admitted to L&D for this. Remember, she is less than 20 weeks. If the pregnancy progresses to term, 
the cerclage is removed around 36 weeks gestation. Most patients end up going into spontaneous labor within two weeks of the removal. If PPROM occurs, there is an increased risk of infection. Therefore, the cerclage is removed no matter what the gestational is at the time of the rupture. In this case, up to 65% of women will end up delivering within the next 48 hours. If showing signs of infection, administer antibiotics when ordered. Be sure to notify NICU and the neonatologist of the potential delivery of this preterm infant. So thank you for listening to this short lecture on the incompetent cervix.